Hey everybody, Catsynth TV, and today we are looking at the Mini Freak, a new hybrid digital analog synthesizer from our friends at Arturia. This is part one of a two-part series. In this part, we will focus on the oscillators, filters, and modulation. The Mini Freak is an extension and expansion of Arturia's popular Micro Freak synthesizer. Like the Micro Freak, it centers around oscillators with a variety of models and three real-time controls, an analog filter, and a sequencer arpeggiator. One of the most immediate differences with the Mini Freak is that it's larger and has more traditional piano-style keys. Although not full-size, they respond well and are very playable. The Mini Freak is also a polyphonic instrument, unlike the Micro Freak, which was monophonic. It also includes an expanded engine with two oscillators instead of one, an effects section, and expanded modulation options. Let's start by looking at a few of the factory presets. Now we're going to explore each of the Mini Freak's oscillator types in more detail. These are the same as on the latest version of the Micro Freak. We'll post links to our various Micro Freak videos at the top of the screen as we go through them. There is a knob for selecting the oscillator type and three real-time parameters labeled Wave, Timbre, and Shape that are different in each oscillator type. First up is Basic Waves, which allows one to move between square and sawtooth waves. Next up is Super Waves, which combines a basic waveform with a detuned version of itself. Harmonic is an additive synthesizer with controls for the number of partials and overall shape of the spectrum.
Carpless Strong implements a physical model for string sounds. Analog modeling models the behavior of classic analog oscillators. WaveShaper applies a combination of wave shaping and wave folding found in modular synthesizers. FM is a basic FM synthesizer with one modulator and one carrier. Formant models various vowel shapes. Speech features synthesized speech of various bits of text, a little bit like an old speak and spell. Frequency, 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 yellow, 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 Modal is a physical modeling technique for pitched percussion sounds. Noise is, well, noise, along with a little bit of harmonic sound as well.
face is the first of three oscillator types created by our friends at Noise Engineering. This one is a quadrature oscillator, mixing sine and cosine functions together. Saw X features a sawtooth wave phase modulated by subsampled white noise. Finally, the harm oscillator is another additive synthesizer that creates sounds via harmonics or partials. One notable exclusion from the Mini Freak that was included in the Micro Freak is the Wavetable Oscillator. I do hope they include that in a future firmware update. Now the oscillators are pretty cool by themselves, but the power comes when one applies modulations. There are several default modulation destinations, as well as assignable destinations. We can set Assign 1 to Oscillator's 1 shape parameter by pressing Assign 1 and turning the shape knob. We can now scroll through the modulation matrix to set LFO1 to modulate oscillator 1 shape. Okay, let's change the oscillator type to FM, turn off the LFO modulation. The Mini Freak has two bars on the left that can be switched from the traditional pitch bend and mod wheel to assignable macro controls. They display with this blue color in the macro mode. Press Shift and Macro to assign them to any parameter you like. I'm going to set Macro 1 to the wave parameter of oscillator 1. and Macro 2 to the timbre parameter. We can now use the macro controllers to dynamically shape our FM sound. As mentioned, the Mini Freak has two separate oscillators, each supporting all the oscillator types we just looked at. Let's bring up oscillator 2 now. Turn up its volume. It's currently set to basic waves, same as oscillator 1. But we can set it to a different type, allowing us to mix and match different oscillator types at once. Let's switch to harmonic. And now switch oscillator 1 to noise engineering bass.
The result of the two types together is an extra rich timbre. Now we can also set modulation independently for the two oscillators. Let's set a sine 1 to oscillator 2 timbre and have it modulated by LFO 1. Go back to oscillator 1, bring up the saw X type, dial in a sound that we like, and set assign 2 to oscillator 1 wave, and assign LFO 2 to modulate it. That didn't quite do what I expected, probably because I assigned LFO2 to also modulate assign 1. Let's go back and instead assign LFO1 to modulate oscillator 2 timbre. Let's try another example. We'll set oscillator 1 to analog modeling. Add some modulation on oscillator 1 timbre, which is one of the default destinations. And now add saw X again on oscillator 2, but this time with more noise. Point assign destination 1 to the volume of oscillator 2 and modulate it with the main envelope. This will bring in more of a punch at the beginning of the sound than with just the analog modeling alone. Now we can also stack the same type on both oscillators. Let's set both to super wave for a sort of super super wave. Now this seems like the perfect time to bring in the analog filter. This is your standard analog resonant filter with low pass, band pass, and high pass modes. It's quite similar to the one on the Microfreak, but it adds dedicated envelope and velocity modulation controls. Let's try out the low pass mode now. Add some envelope modulation. Switch to bandpass mode. Switch to bandpass mode. 
And to high pass. We can modulate filter cutoff using its destination in the modulation matrix. We'll assign LFO1 to modulate it. Now oscillator 2 includes some additional features that change it from a second oscillator into a processor for sound from oscillator 1. These can be found after the noise engineering oscillator types. The first is FMAM. In this mode, oscillator 1 modulates a simple carrier wave on oscillator 2. You can set the shape of the carrier. The timbre control sets the amount of AM or ring modulation from oscillator 1, which is currently set to basic waves. Now ring modulation isn't particularly interesting until we start changing the tuning of oscillator 1. So let's do that now. Of course, we can use any oscillator type for the modulation. Let's try Super Wave. Pretty cool. Now let's go wild and try the speech synthesizer as a modulator. Okay, let's turn down ring modulation and bring up FM. Switch oscillator 1 back to basic waves. That's a typical FM sound. Let's switch oscillator 1 to harmonic. <music> FM gets really grungy really quickly. We can soften it a bit with the filter. Next up is the multimode filter, which applies one of several filter types to the sound from oscillator 1. Now I know what you're thinking. But wait, don't we already have an analog multimode filter? Yes, we do, but this digital filter has some interesting features. For one, there are more modes, like different slopes for low pass, high pass, and band pass. Let's start with this unusual 36 dB low pass.
Now, one thing we can do with this digital filter that we can't do with the analog filter is dynamically modulate the filter mode. Let's set assign 1 in the modulation matrix to shape 2, which represents the filter mode, and assign LFO1 to modulate assign 1. That's a pretty cool sound. Of course, we can also use the analog filter at the same time. Let's have LFO2 modulate the analog cutoff at the same time as LFO1 is modulating the digital filter type. There are some other filter types that are much easier to implement in digital, such as the surgeon filter, which allows precise control of frequencies via cutoff and spread controls. There is also a comb filter, which is useful for modeling acoustic spaces or creating metallic sounds. It works well with short percussive sounds. Let's create such a sound with the modal oscillator and feed it through the comb filter. The phaser filter allows one to apply a phaser effect to specific frequency ranges. It has controls for frequency, feedback, and the number of poles.
add modulation to the cutoff control to get that familiar phasing effect. We can also modulate Oscillator 2's shape to dynamically change the number of poles, which would be difficult to do on a classic phaser. Finally, there is the Destroy Mode. It's represented with this amusing exploding frog graphic. Let's see that again. Now I will remind folks, no animals are ever harmed in the making of CatSynth TV. This effect has a wave folder, a sample rate decimator, and an unusually nice sounding bit crush control. Let's modulate the bit crush using the cycling envelope, which is essentially a third LFO when put in loop mode. And let's modulate the wave folder with LFO1. Let's go wild with some more modulation. Set macro control 1 to decimate and macro 2 to filter cutoff. <laughs> As we can hear, there are quite a variety of sonic possibilities with the Mini Freak, and things can get quite complex. It can take some time to master. Let's listen to a few more of the factory presets. Thank you. 
hope that you've enjoyed this detailed look at the oscillators, filters, and modulation in the Mini Freak. In part two, we will look at the sequencer, arpeggiator, effects section, and audio input. So please do come back for that. To find out more, please visit Arturia.com and check out the description below this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to CatSynth TV.